Good evening, everyone. Let me hit the right button here. All right. This is the Grace Life Unleashed podcast with Pastor Dave and Nick. Let me turn around and see what's back there. Hey, it is back there. Um, playing chess in a checkers world. I did a couple adjustments with the way we were recording. I, I lowered the camera a little bit to get more of our bodies. Not that you, everyone wants to see our bodies, but we were kind of looking down at us and okay. all we had was our heads. Not that it matters. I don't know why people need to watch us anyways, but that's another issue. We're part of Berean Bible Church, uh, Grace Life Church. We're located in Evansville, Indiana. And if you can help us out financially, it's P.O. Box 6033. And I want to thank those who have. Um, I got a, I got a so. um, text from a guy living in Madisonville, I believe, uh, okay. last week. And uh, I told him, remember I mentioned it cost more to mail a book than um, yeah. Then the book cost the buy. Yeah, 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 he yeah. sent me a text back and said he just loves the book and how it just helped helped everything. In fact, on Sunday I'll probably that's put not, a copy of that. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. Text on the overhead, but he he wants to come visit us. Madisonville is what? Oh, hour? it's only forty five. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. even an hour. I don't know. Minutes. I don't know exactly where he lives, but he's talking it's about just coming too up. south of so, but. but it's kind of exciting when people. Um, yeah. Not not that we are the ones that showed him right division, but we're close and he. He's thinking about visiting us and stuff like that. Anyways, um, if you want to see more about us, the website is gracelifeunleashed.com. YouTube is Grace Life Unleashed by Dave Sigmund. Uh, Facebook, Grace Life Church and or Brian Bible Church. And we have a Rumble account. And if you get on Facebook, please subscribe. People are subscribing. Um, every week we get a couple more. Um, and that's exciting. Um, but steady growth, I call that. So that's kind of nice. Again, life rule number one is don't get dead. And you know, some of you don't understand why I did this. Even probably Nick doesn't understand. Uh, he thinks I put it up here for him, but it actually is for him um, because he likes to um, be a little more radical. And we're not, we're not trying to overtake or overthrow anybody. Yeah, but you got to understand, though. I mean, I, for the last six months, I took a pretty big pivot going back to the, to the spring. Remember, we had a conversation, and I just my perspective, uh, and I think my motive kind of changed a little bit. I'm not as as out there. I don't really think about some of that stuff as much as I have been. I, I, I get in and out. Well, I think a lot of that is background information that you need to run your life. But unfortunately, people don't, I don't know, understand or don't want to know. Well, and I, and I think I'm just taking more heed to the, the scripture verse that, that says to live a, a quiet and peaceable life um, in all godliness. I mean, is the system broke? Oh, yeah. It's not. It's more than broke. It's not even fixable. It has to be overthrown in order to be fixed. But that's not what God has asked us to do. Um, it's Satan's world, and uh, he is going to take us all down with him. Um, it's pretty obvious. Um, this this agenda is a one-world government. And uh, if you don't see that, um, trust me, we've lost control. Uh, I don't know who's calling the shots. I'm sure you do. <laughs> but it isn't you and me. Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's speculation because, I mean, they these people, they own everything. So, yeah. They're, they're just, you're never going to hear them in a the limelight. But yeah, I mean, I think there's a set of families that, that literally run the world worldwide. Yeah. But some of the, the yeah, being it, it's, the it's, yeah, it, it's some of the things that are happening. And, and if you don't think that this economy has problems, um, there are so many cracks out there now that I'm amazed. And I said before, I'm amazed it's still holding together. Um, what's probably going to take us down is the bond market. And which people are like, I don't even deal with bonds. Well, if you deal with banks, you deal with bonds. Um, the yield curve has been inverse, and what it means is it costs banks more money to borrow money I'm gonna get water real quick. Yeah, than it is for them to lend it to you. And uh, the problem that comes into is the fact that they're losing money with every loan they write now. And the, the Fed has been trying to help them by uh, not making them cash their bonds in early because there's a penalty if they cash them in too early to try to get cash because people are pulling money out of the banks and, and buying T-bills and stuff because you can get, basically, guys, you can get 5% for a one-year um, uh, treasury bill. And uh, you're taking your money out of the banks, and uh, banks need that money. And they are, it's, banks are failing every day. Now, you're not hearing about it anymore because they're coming and not making a big deal out of it. But if this keeps up any longer, um, there's not going to be many banks left. But some of that, I think, is on purpose because as this digital dollar comes in, they don't want to have that many banks out there. They just want to get it down to pay me a handful and uh, so be aware, if you have a lot of money and you're above the threshold for FDIC insurance, you might want to pull it out and put it in a different 
different banks um, because then it's still insured. But buy some treasury treasury bills for five percent, and there's no risk. The government owns the printing presses, so they'll make sure your money's good. But in second, First Timothy chapter two, Paul says, "I exhort, therefore, first of all, supplications, prayer, intercession, and giving thanks be made for all men." Now, again, he's talking to Christians here. He's talking to you and me. And then he gets a little more specific. And he says, "For kings and all that are in authority, and this is the key that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life." So as you're praying, you're praying that we can lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. It's like, hey, that means we have to control our emotions because, yeah, we do get angry, we get mad, and there's nothing wrong with being angry. There's nothing wrong with being mad. Uh, it's what you do when you get angry and you get mad that creates problems. Um, so, and again, then he goes on and tells us what God's goal is. You know, our God's goal is that um, we will have all men be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So our, our goal as Christians is to lead people to Christ and his death and his burial and his resurrection. That, that's our goal. Amen. Okay. Um, one of the things we're doing here, and this came from a, a true story, uh, when Lori was frustrated with me and I was giving her Bible verses and, and uh, she wanted me to basically tell her what to do. Now, there's a time and place for that. Um, when someone's really hurting, um, they don't have time for a Bible study. I always say the place to have a Bible study is not in an emergency room. The emergency room is where we see if you've been going to Bible study. <laughs> and so for a lot of people, you're like, well, life is great, Dave. What are you going to do when the unemployment rate is 25% and one of the people who are unemployed is you? And now you can't make your house payment and now you can't feed your kids and now you can't make your car payment and now you can't pay off your student loan and now you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't. What are you going to do? And he's, oh, Dave, I wish I would have listened to you a year and a half ago. Yeah, but what can I do now? And what's happening now is the economy is going down. And if you don't think it's going down, I don't know well, where you've more, been. More and more people are going to be forced to rely on the government yeah. for, their, for their everyday needs. Yeah. And that's where we're going to say, oh, hey, no problem. We're going to need to get right, this digital this, dollar. <laughs> this, is how it, this is how it leads to social, socialism and eventually totalitarianism because they, they obviously only want a few slight people in power, real power. Well, what's, what's that one saying? You will own nothing and be happy. And yeah, be happy. Klaus Schwab said that. He yeah. founded the World Economic Forum, which is located over in Davos, Switzerland. Like He did this back in the early 70s. It's been yeah. around for a long period of time. So this plan has been around for a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's, well, for, for hundreds of years yeah and, and the plan is not to make america strong the plan is to make america compromise to be like everyone else oh we <laughs> so and so so we're going to tell you what to do it's amazing you know. the fact that we were even able to we were able to thrive and rise to the level that we rose to begin with that was allowed to happen but they don't want it to succeed, though. Well, um, yeah, or, but I think the plan all along was for it to happen and, of course, for there to be a decline. It, so for, for a, a new world order to be able to come in, there's you've you got to be replacing something that's old. So how do you do that? Or broken. So, or broken. Yeah, so yeah. You know, what they're doing is you know that you can create order out of chaos. There you go. Right? And so as everything breaks down at every level, uh, of society, then that's when the necessary change, the change that they want. And I mean, that's where all this is. It just, it takes, it's just like from an economic standpoint, if there's going to be a downward spiral to, to, uh, to the stock market, that takes, there's a period of time that it, that it takes. So oh, it takes forever. Right. right well, the, the, the same thing when it comes yeah. to a global change, yeah. really, it's a global governance change and it's really a change in, 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 in how everything that we do to be able to live because they're changing the banking structure they're changing the religious structure it's all luciferian now anyway it's just going to be more out in the open and in your face which it pretty much already is now to begin with so then you have uh, this is a dictatorship this is what people need to understand and it's hard to fathom because of the freedoms and the things that we that we've been blessed to enjoy in this country especially over a very long period of time but just in the last 20 if you look there are a few uh, more and more of our civil liberties have been removed have been taken away yep. And I don't think that the average person has really, really felt that, but it exists. Well, if you'd go back and, and it's, it's like the frog well, in the boiling water, probably, you know, a little bit here and there. Can you imagine there. living in New York City, San Francisco, Los Angeles, uh, right now, I, Chicago? Yeah. I, um, I've never been to L.A., never been to New York. I have been to Chicago. Um, but, yeah, it, it's... It, Baltimore, Philadelphia. I mean, these yeah. are these are cities that are literally crumbling from within. They're falling apart. There's a societal breakdown. I mean, the, the, the amount of homelessness, 
the encampments, you know, the tents set up just on streets, you know, in business districts. I mean, it's, I don't think, <laughs> we here in the Midwest, here in Evansville alone, we, we just, we don't understand no, we're how sheltered. bad we're they, sheltered. oh, yeah. for sure, how yeah. bad it can possibly get. And, and again, we say this on a week in, a week out basis. We're, we're not trying to create or paint a gloom and doom kind of a situation, but if you understand your the word of God in your scriptures, you can see where all of this is headed. Oh yeah, yeah, it's headed to one world. But government. we also yeah. all know that the rapture of the church, the body of Christ, has to happen first. Yeah, the stock market and the economy are not connected, and this is something I put the slide on here to remind me every single week when I get frustrated as I do some trading in the market that um, one piece of news one week will make the stock market go up and another piece of news the same week is the same news will make it go down. Which means it all it does is give the stock market liquidity to do what it wants to do. And by, by doing what it wants to do, there are people with a lot more money than you and I have mm -hmm. that manipulate this market. Just like the bond market yeah, yeah. is, the stock market compared to the bond market, the stock market is just a little baby that doesn't even exist. The bond market runs the world. Yeah. And with that yield curve being inverted, it will destroy the world and take America down with it. What's happening in China right now with their, basically their economy as far as buildings, the price of houses has just cratered down there because people had all their money in houses and they were overinflated. And that bubble's popping. That same bubble is coming to America. Our car buying. Well, then I would imagine this would have to involve the World Bank, the International oh, Monetary yeah, it's Fund, all tied together. China has the, so the much Bank money of from the world and even United yeah, States. Yeah, yeah, and those so, are those yeah. are like global central banks. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if those guys fail, that's going to come back and affect us. So we're seeing the banking system. I think what's going to affect this morning else now is going to be the banking system. If, if the Federal Reserve really wanted to solve this, they would put interest rates to zero yesterday. But they, they want to break it first. And you never let a good crisis go to waste. And, and they're going to break it. But in the trouble in breaking it, they're going to break you. Um, right now, banks do not want to lend you um, money uh, if, unless you have a really good credit rating. And for a while there, they would lend you money if you had a terrible credit rating. They don't want you to be buying cars and houses and stuff because it just makes them lose more money. But that time will come. And the reason the Fed will lower interest rates is not because they say, oh, we fixed it. No, because it's broken. Something will break and they're going to be forced to lower it. Otherwise, the Fed would love to keep interest rates at 5 and 6 and 7%. Trust me, they would love to do that because it makes more money for them. But they can't destroy the economy completely, but it almost seems like that's what they want to do more than anything else. Now, again, the majority of the decline in these bear markets occur after the Fed pivot. The Fed says they're going to raise rates again, which means they haven't even pivoted it yet. So even though the stock market came down over the last month, and basically, the stock market hit its high uh, almost a uh, year and three quarters ago. It was January of, of it'll be two years this January that it hit its high. And it's been really coming down ever since. And now we kind of hit a high, and that's probably going to be the high, and we're probably going to go down. We're probably going to go down to the 200 day moving average, and then we're going to bounce off of that and we get a bounce, and then we're really going to go down. So, to understand what's going on, you know, and I'm not a prophet, but you know, we're at the complacency where we got complacency here. And if you look what happens after complacency, because we're almost to the end of that, we might get a little jump up yet. Uh, one of the guys I follow thinks we might get a little jump up, but it'll be short lived and then we're going down. Another guy I follow says we're headed down to the 200 day moving average like yesterday. Um, and so, if you think the stock market is going to go to all time highs, uh, I think you might be wrong by about 20 years. Um, and after that, it goes down, and we have anxiety, and then we have denial, and then we have panic, and finally we get to the point where we have depression, and then we have disbelief, and that's 20 years later. And if you don't think that's going to happen, go back and look at the Great Depression. No one thought that was going to happen either. Um, we're in the same exact cycle. I put a, a chart up on a church, and, and I got yelled at by somebody in church, but it put the stock market of the 19... You know, 29 crash and 32 crash uh, up against where we are right now. And I said, this almost looks like a mirror. And, and one guy yelled at me and he went, you, Dave, you can't do that. You're kind of predicting the future. You really shouldn't be doing that. And I said, hey, I'm just putting two charts up there. And I'm telling you, if you look at these two charts and you, you look at them, is, do you have a concern? And so far, you know, and I, I got yelled at a lot. By a cautious things. concern. I, I got yelled at because people tell me that I'm, I'm no good short term because I'm thinking too long term because I'm like, don't buy anything. 
is you got to live your life. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'd like to live right, my life right. next year too, and so I'm willing yeah, to suffer right. now so that I don't. So I haven't bought you know cars and boats and houses, and in fact, I'm renting right now, and I'm going to go back hopefully, Lord willing, and buy a house in about oh, maybe a year or two or three. I'm hoping for half price, and it's like great. Now here's a question: If I can buy a house for half price, somebody lost half their money on their house, right, Nick? That's right. Um, do I have to feel sorry for that person? Well, I don't think it's about emotion. <laughs> so, so, I mean, it is kind of like, oh, wow. And that means somebody lost money. So if you're sitting on your house, be prepared to lose about 50% of its value, just like the stock market's going to go down 50%. I guess it all depends compared to how much they paid for to begin with. Well, that's true, too. Um, you know, we've seen the house I, I sold... I owned it for seven years, and I made almost 50% profit on it in, in seven years. That's not a bad return. No, not at all. Um, I think no. most people, in fact, I was going to sell it a year. Most people would take I was going to sell it a year earlier because of some situations going on in my life, and by waiting an extra year, I made like 50000 more. <laughs> nice. so, Very nice. I was like, yeah, and I smiled all the way to the bank. But that's just, was that just luck? Yeah, maybe it was. Um, but right now, I would not be going to buy I don't know. It's circumstantial. You just sold your house at the right time. Yeah, and I bought it at the right you time. You bought it at the right time. Correct. Yeah, and so and this is Evansville. Now, if I would have hung on to my house in Florida, I could have made twice as much money. But anyways, yeah. but <laughs> live and learn. <laughs> well, anyways, I was going to tell you this is what we're at. These are Fibonacci, Elliott wave type issues, and and if you think this is just voodoo, trust me, this stuff is right. Okay. Um, Elliott wave is a little bit of a problem in the, in the middle, but it gets the ends right. And according to the end of this, we're going down 50% by, by 2032. In other words, for the next nine years, it's not going to be an up market. It's going to be a down market. And if you'd want to buy the dips, uh, like we've learned to do since the Great Depression, which has worked really well, it's not going to work for the next nine years, and you will lose half your money. Now, maybe you, it's okay for you, but... Nine years and 25 years by the time it comes back up to even again, uh, I'm in heaven by then, so I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I just got to make it the next 20 years, and I figure, yeah, maybe 25 years, and I'll be like 90, and I'll be like, yeah. I, I'm ready to go home. You're ready to I go. I don't know if I want to live any longer than that. So yeah, right. You're still young. You. you still well, got a life to live. Relatively, so. I guess. So, but anyways, Nick, tell us about this chart. All yeah. right, so as you can see at the top, it's uh, it's called rightly dividing the word of truth. It's a right division chart uh, for folks to be able to look at um, as a visual aid to start with a basic understanding of exactly how God has dealt with mankind over the course of human history. It goes all the way back to Adam, brings you to Abraham, brings you to the, the start and the building of the nation of Israel. It brings you to Christ when he was on earth. It takes you to through his death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, it brings you up to the parenthetical period that we're in now, which we call the dispensation of God's grace. God, God is dealing with mankind on the basis of what his son accomplished for us on that cross. And basically, he's dishing out mercy is the easiest way to be able to understand it. And so the whole idea with this being a new body that's formed and created, which was a secret kept. It was uh, kept. A, it was a mystery kept a secret since prior to the world began, but it was revealed to and through the Apostle Paul. God is going to take a body of believers and take us into the heavenly places for us to be able to replace those fallen angels that decided to rebel when Satan fell. Uh, beyond that, of course, the continuation of, of everything that God's dealings with the nation of Israel entails is also going to be concluded. The seven-year tribulation period, the, the thousand-year reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. From David's, David's throne in Jerusalem in the nation within the nation of Israel, which is basically the thousand year kingdom has to occur. Uh, and then of course, to the end, uh, when we basically would call it eternity future. So uh, the, the best way to be able to, so, and we take this, this is second Timothy two fifteen. study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And basically what that means is understanding, um, the way God has dealt with mankind throughout the course of history. And of course, now we live in an age of grace that he's dispensing. We're not under the law, and that's going to be the big difference between us and the nation of Israel. So, Pastor, I hope that I was able to explain that in a way that people will be allowed to, to understand, because this is the key to unlocking yeah. and understanding well, the Once you understand what this chart says and get involved in a Bible study that helps you understand it better, this chart will be like, wow, I, I see it. You know, And the first time you see it, you go, I don't understand this at all. Uh, it takes a little time, but once it clicks, someone told me it's like being saved all over again. The whole Bible now makes, makes sense. sense. And, and, and that it removes is all contradictions. More than anything else, otherwise there are contradictions over and over and over and over again. Um, it, 
Is this, is, okay, back in Acts 3, now we're going to go to Acts 4, but they have to get the context of who's talking. Back in Acts 3, verse 1. Now again, Acts is not a book we go to to show the body of Christ, although it's there. Acts is a book written to show why Israel is set aside, which is because of unbelief, and it shows the process of where they were basically strike one, strike two, strike three, you're out of the pool. But God is working with Israel, he's, he's, he's giving her another chance, and the body of Christ is ramping up uh, with the Apostle Paul. So we have two churches kind of going on side by side, but it's written from a kingdom perspective and understanding why God set Israel aside, which 100%. He did. And, and keep in mind as well, Luke being the author. Yeah, which would be a, a, one of the 12. Well, that's good. <laughs> and uh, also uh, understanding, you know, that you know, God did not raise the body of Christ up to replace Israel. We're not the replacement for Israel. We're not spiritual Israel. We are not the bride of Christ. That's all Israel's promises. We are the body of Christ, which is an entirely different, unique animal, even though there are some similarities. Granted, Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again. He also died for the Old Testament saints. But that's not their gospel, but it still was required for their salvation. So in Acts 3, 1, it says, Now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. So again, last week we looked at the fact that you know they healed this guy now we get to acts 4 peter and and john are still there okay and as they spake again that's why i went back to acts 3 1 unto the people the priests and the captain of the temple and the sadducees came upon them all right now these are not friends of the 12 okay the priests are you know basically the area where you know paul came out of the sadducees and the pharisees and part of the sanhedrin so this is a group that did not believe that christ was messiah this is a group that did not believe christ was god this is a group that killed jesus christ okay so these guys came up and upon them being grieved that they taught the people and preached to jesus the resurrection of the dead again they wanted jesus to stay dead <laughs> you know he didn't rise from the dead being grieved that yeah. they taught yeah it's like guys you're not supposed to be teaching this now did these guys know that Christ rose from the dead? What do you think, Nick? It's a, little, some no. it's a speculation. I, I think they think it was all staged. I, I think there, I mean, there was probably some rumors going around that the fact that the, he's gone, but I don't think they really actually believed. You know, even Paul on the road to Damascus, uh, Paul's issue was that he thought he was doing God's will in capturing these, these quote unquote Christians that followed Christ because these guys were following a liar and an imposter. They thought he was a fake Messiah. That's yeah. right. He claimed to be God and that's why we killed and him. And he wasn't. Yeah, and then what Paul realized on the road to Damascus is that Jesus is the Christ, and he is alive. And he saw, he saw the resurrected, glorified, ascended yeah. Lord. I think he thought God was going to kill him. I don't think he was anything. He's like, oh, darn, I'm dead. <laughs> Can I come back from this? Um, all right, so they, again, this is the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests, those in charge who didn't like the fact that these guys were teaching us. They laid hands on them, put them in hold the next day, until the next day, for it was now eventide, or the evening. Albeit many of them which heard the word believed, and a number of men was about 5,000. So, Impressive. again, you know, I, I'm always happy to be at one guy saved. I know, right? 5,000? 5, <laughs> 5,000 people. That's almost a miracle. So the people, <clears throat> the people are not the problem, okay? Yeah. And we need to understand that. What God was looking for was the leadership to come around. The religious rulers. Right. And we did not really, see, we saw a few. You know, I I, I I think, you know, we, we Nicodemus might have, he was probably a religious leader. I think he kind of came around. It, it's hard to say. Um, but to have 5,000, okay, and these guys believed on their own free will. This is not, you know, Calvinism. God didn't make them believe. They believed that Christ was Messiah. That's it. Peter was not teaching them that Christ died on the cross for their sins. He was teaching them he's alive and he is the Messiah. He's the king. All right, so these guys are basically spent the night in jail. It came to pass on the morrow that their rulers, the elders, and the scribes, and Annas, the high priest, and Caiaphas. Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priests were gathered together at Jerusalem. So, again, what Rome did with the, the priests and stuff is says, guys, you know, we will let you be in charge as long as you do our bidding and keep peace. Make the people happy. And that's one of the reasons why they wanted to get rid of Jesus, too, is the fact that he was a threat to their livelihood because Rome didn't want anybody claiming to be the king of the Jews. <laughs> Rome wanted to be in charge. So to have somebody coming in saying they're going to get rid of Rome. Well, the emperor was the king. Yeah, and he was God. He, and, that's exactly and, right. And that's the people wanted Christ to overthrow the Roman government. You know, and then that's one of the reasons that, from a really very selfish standpoint, why the, <clears throat> the, the the leadership wanted Christ gone is because it was their livelihood, and so, and in fact, the reason that 
<clears throat> in 70 AD, the reason that the temple was destroyed is because the uh, people got out of hand, and so Rome came in and took the whole religious system apart and yes. kicked everybody out. <laughs> okay. All right. And when they had set them, it's, it's Peter and uh, John in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, again, this is important, filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, Christ told those guys, hey, when the Holy Ghost comes, don't worry about what you're going to say because the Holy Ghost is going to give you the words to come out of your mouth. That's, that's not true today, but it was true then. Ye rulers and people and elders of Israel. So again, who's he talking to? Jews. <laughs> okay. If we this day be examined of the good deed done. Now remember, what did they do? They healed the guy. <laughs> okay. Since when do you get in trouble for healing someone? <laughs> okay. Wild. Man. Well, they did it in the name of Jesus. Um, if we this day be examined of the good deed done uh, to the important man by what means he is made whole. In other words, we healed the guy. You know, again, <laughs> I do think Peter knew what they were complaining about, but he's just playing like, okay, so what do we do? You know, be it known unto you all, then all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Now, those are not the words you want to say if you want to live to the next day, okay? Because remember, these, these rulers had the ability to have people put to death. Uh, case an example, Jesus, <laughs> if they went against the government. So, but they're saying here is that, hey, you know, the guy you killed, Jesus, uh, it's that's how we did it. This will get anybody mad as far as if they're not on the side of the resurrect, resurrected Christ. This is a stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now again, the name of Jesus, Peter's not saying he died on the cross, even though he did for our sins, was buried and rose again. He's saying it's the name of Jesus that saves you. Christ is the Messiah. He's the son of the living God. That's their salvation message. So they have to believe that Christ is the Messiah. That's it. It's pretty simple. You know, hey, I don't, it's, it's probably easier almost than... The grace message, and I think that's pretty simple. <laughs> All right, verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now, again, why, why not that these guys were idiots, but they were fishermen. They probably didn't have a college education. They probably didn't talk like college men, yet they are talking very eloquently, and they are giving an answer to these guys, and they're pretty much putting them in their place. And it's because the Holy Ghost is giving them words, okay? And beholding the men which were healed, which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Again, <laughs> what did we do wrong? <laughs> the only thing they get mad about is the fact that they were giving Christ credit. Other than that, in fact, is there anything wrong with healing someone? You know, hey, go for it, I guess, huh? But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves. Okay, now they're like, all right, what do we do? <laughs> you know, saying, what shall we do to these men? For that indeed a um, notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. In other words, we can't say, well, it didn't happen, which is what they said about the resurrection of Christ. Remember they paid those guards off to say the disciples came and took them? You know. Uh, which is all a big lie. Um, but you got, you know, how many people were saved? Was it 5,000? Yeah. So how many people were there? <laughs> you know, I don't think everybody was saved. Let's say 10,000. That, yeah, that would be a total yeah. guess. And, and, and if you saw somebody healed that you knew was crippled their whole life, wouldn't you be like, hey, guess what I saw today? I would know. That would quickly probably yeah. make me believe. More so than instantly. being on YouTube or, or anything and, else. And again, we go back to the same thing, guys. <laughs> the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after knowledge. Yeah. So these guys got a problem. Um, way too many people know about this. It's impossible to deny it, impossible to hush it. They can't do that. So this is a political problem more than anything else. But that it spread no further among the people, let us strictly threaten them. Okay, like let's, let's make them not talk about it, okay? That they speak henceforth to no man in this, his, this name. So let, let's threaten that if they do this again, <laughs> that we're going to like kill them. I don't know what. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. You know, cease and desist. You know, how's that going to work for you? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure they threatened they were going to kill him. And Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. In other words, uh, are we going to do what God wants or you want? Guess who wins? You know, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. 
And again, that'd be true for all of us. And even if the, the those guys agreed not to talk about it, you got all these people that were talking about it, and I'm sure the word was out, okay? So when they had further threatened them, <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> you've been threatened. <laughs> they let them go, finding nothing how they might punish them. I mean, what's the charge? You healed a guy, okay? Not like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have to do it more secretively than that because of the people. Again, because of the people. If the people wouldn't have been there, these guys would have been dead yesterday. Okay, for all men glorified God for that which was done. Uh, for the men, or the man was about 40 years old of whom this miracle of healing was showed. In other words, he probably was crippled his whole life and everybody knew him as far as that goes. Um, um, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said unto them. And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which hath made heaven and earth and the sea and all in them is. Okay, so they're, they're saying, hey, thank you, Lord. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For the truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together. For to do whatsoever they, thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold, their threatenings and grant unto thee, sir, thy servant, that with all boldness they may speak thy word. So they're saying, hey, we, we're going to keep talking about it by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. Again, what Nick was just talking about, you know, he, they're going to continue to do these miracles. This did not slow them down at all. In fact, it probably encouraged them more than anything else because Absolutely. they, you know, they couldn't do anything to them. And remember, the Holy Spirit's there to be able to provide this strength, this boldness, this. Yeah. I mean, remember, this, Christ, supernatural Christ told them, doing don't the 12. take notes because the Holy Spirit's going to bring all things to remembrance. Well, keep in mind the kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven is at hand. It was literally being offered. Mm -hmm. And with the rejection, with the stoning of Stephen, obviously this is when God made the decision to be able to, to, pre to basically press the pause button. And there's a diminishing of the nation of Israel. That's what you're going to see all through the Acts of the Apostles. It's a transition book that's explaining the reason that God basically set them aside and started something new with the church, the body of Christ, and with the Apostle Paul. You know, these guys, the leadership made a comment earlier that, you know, these guys were not intelligent men or they were not well learned and I think that's a true fact I mean nothing nothing against fishermen or whatever the case may be but they definitely were the working class but you they know what it makes class. me think of whatever you, you even bring or mention something like that is that God uses the base things of this world yeah. to confound the wise what better to take than somebody that's unlearned uh, a simple common person and, and provide them with what the Holy Spirit was giving them I mean it's it's incredible I, I was talking to um, a, a card dealer dealer man or a car salesman <laughs> the other day and I was throwing some stuff at him about the economy and about the fact that people are paying over a thousand dollars a month in car payments and the fact that there's all these new trucks sitting on the lots and things are ready to fall apart and he looked at me and he goes how do you know all this stuff you know most people don't even have a clue what's really going on behind yeah, the scenes not that don't. I'm smart not that the Holy Spirit gave me that but the the disciples were not Christ did not pick the intellectuals he picked common people like like Nick said but when the Holy Spirit came upon him even the leadership is like you guys are not college people how do you know all these things you know, they, the power they, of God right and it's exciting to see that you know but when someone comes to me today and says well God is going to tell me what to say that's not what he's doing today okay and we're not Israel this whole program has been set aside Paul comes along and Paul does not tell us don't worry about what you're going to say Nick because God's going to give you the answer the Holy Spirit's going to tell you what to say what does Paul say study okay you know, and Christ told him, right. don't study. I'll give you the words. You know, it's like it's like not studying for a test and acing it, even though you don't have a clue what you're doing. These guys were given the power to speak, the, and, and God gave them the words, and I think he gave them the ability to understand what they were saying, too. Sure, sure. Peter wasn't just a talking, you know, speaker. Yeah, that didn't right. go, I don't know what I'm saying, but right, I'm just right, going right. to say this. I think he understood it. He was given the gift of knowledge and the gift of wisdom. No doubt about it. And, and so God supernaturally made him very, very intelligent. Okay. All right. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they assembled together that's kind of God going good job <laughs> okay and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness it definitely empowered them and the multitude of them that believed were one heart and a one soul now again this is the the kingdom church yes. coming together okay this is a taste 
of kingdom life. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon people in the kingdom, they're going to get along. <laughs> okay? If you took a bunch of people today and put them in a, a group and said, and we're going to get to this yet, I want you guys to sell everything you have and I want you all to get along and not be jealous or be mad, that would last about two hours. Yeah, you know? it's only with the power of God yeah. that he can make this of all. This is communism with the Holy one Spirit. one accord, yeah. yeah. Oh, no doubt about it. Yeah. One heart and one soul, neither said any of them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. common. I mean, it's like, hey, I, I own... You know, one guy maybe has like 10 houses and the guy doesn't have none. He goes, I'm going to sell my 10 houses and we're going to pool our money. And, and the guy with 10 went, I, I love it. And the guy with one or no houses said, I love it too. But the problem always is the people who have a lot. And like, so I'm supposed to give my lot to the people who don't have anything. And usually that's why communism doesn't work is because eventually you run out of other people's money to spend and then yeah, we're all that's broke. Right. That's right. You know? <clears throat> um, yeah. Um, but everybody in the Holy Spirit made unity, you know, and, and that's what kingdom life is going to be like because the Holy Spirit's going to allow people It'll be to amazing. live the life and this is a taste of kingdom life this is not what god's doing today so when people don't get along it, it, it's not god's fault he hasn't done that yet okay now we should get along paul says we should be you know of one mind okay absolutely all right and with great power gave the apostle witness of the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace was upon them all Neither was there any among them that lacked. Okay, so again, what people are doing is they're going to sell everything they have and they're going to pool their money, okay? For as many as were possessors of land or houses sold them and brought the price of the things that were sold. So what we're going to do is we're setting up a, a community of people who are going to live off the equity of everyone. Now, okay, the reason this was going to work is like, well, how long can that last? Well, it only had to last for the first half of the tribulation. So you have to understand what's going on here. Once the tribulation starts, it's going to be all out chaos, okay? If, if you had been around when, let's say, World War II started, um, probably the best place to have your money invested w would not be in cruise line stocks, okay? <laughs> or, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever you want to have it in. Uh, the economy suffered badly. Uh, or at the beginning of the Great Depression, yeah. wouldn't you have rather had your money in cash at that point? Sure. So basically they're going cash. Yeah. And the reason they're going cash is because that's something that is available. And, and for cash for them, it wasn't like, this is, you know, by good faith the U.S. government, we're talking gold and silver, okay? Yes. This right, is right. real money. Yes. <laughs> not, not, not the the fake money that you have today, okay? The paper money is. Yeah, paper money has nothing behind it. It used to have gold and silver behind it, not 100%, yeah, but it used to. But then Nixon got us off the gold standard and then they could print as much money as they wanted. And 50, come over, yeah, 50 place. years ago, crazy. Yeah. It, it, if you ever want to look up and see what, if, if the gold and silver were valued to what, how many dollars are out there, um, how much an ounce of gold would be worth? You'd be amazed. Um, that's how much they've inflated the the money. Not we're, not that we're ever going to get back to that, but uh, yeah. you know. But if things get really bad, you don't want to have dollars. You want to have gold and silver because that's still God's money. <clears throat> yes. All right. Okay. So they sold everything because halfway through the tribulation, when the abomination of desolation is, happens, when the Antichrist stands up in the, the temple and he goes, I'm your Messiah. And the people go, no, you're not. And then he goes, fine, you're going to die then. And he basically tries to kill the Jews. Mm hmm. They're told to flee to the mountains. So at that point, they don't need cash because God's going to feed them gonna take care and of them. take That's care right. of them. So this is going to last three and a half years. Tribulation and try to be able to walk into the kingdom. Yeah. So if you take any church, I don't care how big or small it is, because some churches have millionaires in it, and some people have churches, and the same churches have somebody who has nothing. But if you take all their all their assets, and again, we're going to sell everything, not just some things. We're selling everything because we want to, and we're all getting along, and life is good, and we all are on the same page. I'll guarantee you that every Every single church or most every church could last three and a half years. That's that's the goal. Now we know it didn't happen because God said it will aside, but yes. that was the plan as far as that goes. Okay. And laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Now, I have a need for a steak every night, Nick. What do you think? Can we can and you don't like steak, so Sucks to be you, right? Because you like what pinto beans or something. Um, <laughs> how do you think they handled that? <laughs> well, I so I, again, would, imagine, I, I would imagine that, that, that common things were <clears throat> distributed evenly amongst the, the the masses, the crowd. Well, I think you got to remember the there Holy, was. I don't think mm, there were luxuries like that. Well, I think the Holy Spirit also gave people the sense of unity. Sure. So they were like, 
I don't care. I'll eat pinto beans. Grateful, mm-hmm. thankful, yeah, regardless. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're, we see the we see the big picture, which is the kingdom's coming. Uh, I can suffer a little bit and not let my personal pride get involved in that. Um, again, I, the people who had nothing were totally happy. It's the people who gave up the most. I think they had the most to lose. Or like, okay, I just sold all my houses, so you could have steak. I don't think so. Um, you know. Um, so so be aware of that. But the point is, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they all got along. It's something that you and I have never seen. You know, we see people get along. You know, January or um, September tenth. No, December, December 12th, <laughs> the, day, the day after. We're getting to that. When, when is uh, the World Trade Center? That was the yeah, 12th, yeah, or 11th. When was it? Yeah, well, it was back in then. <laughs> <laughs> the 11th. What, yeah. What's today, the 7th? Yeah, Six. we're getting close to that. Yeah, four nine eleven. I remember exactly where I was when I oh, heard I do too. Plane ran I do too. That was the pivotal. That was the, the seminal and the pivotal moment in my life that actually that got me to the point where I woke up and finally started oh. to, to do enough research to realize what was really going on. I was. I was in Orlando at the time at, at Fellowship Bible Church, and I was driving into work. I, I was, I had my office in, at church, and I remember hearing on the news a, a plane ran, in, ran into the World Trade Center. I'm thinking, what an idiot! He ran into, the, what these guys like fly right into it, and uh, what well, happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't even know what happened. And my plane, I thought it was like a single engine plane or something. Right, right. And then um, about an hour later, I actually went home, and it was eerie because nobody was on the streets, nobody was out, everybody had gone home and was just ready for World War Three to start. It was scary times. Yeah, it was extremely chaotic. It was um. All right, so they laid them down at the apostles' feet. Distributions made every man according to their need. Um, Joseph. And Joseph, okay, apostle by surname Barnabas. Now, that name sounds familiar, doesn't it? It Barnabas. does. Barnabas. Hmm. It does. It, it, Maybe that I, was like Paul's, Paul's future first companion. companion. So this is a kingdom saint, okay? Yep. yep. He he basically, it says in 37, having land, sold it, and brought the money and laid it at He's the apostles' feet. So, this, so Paul's first companion, and when he went out on his first missionary journey, because we know that, you know, Afterwards, it was Silas, but um, mm-hmm. he basically was a kingdom saint. Now, so it's interesting. He he always was a kingdom saint. So this is Paul's companion. As Paul went into the synagogues, he would talk from the kingdom perspective. I believe, saying, "Hey guys, I'm part of the kingdom church, and just so you know, this guy's legit. Christ is the Messiah." And then Paul would bring any Gentile into grace. But the the Jews, I believe, at this time were still allowed to enter into the kingdom program because yes. most, and, you, and you teach that yeah, thoroughly. Very, and a lot of testers don't. I don't know why, but they don't. But this guy, he's basically a, a Levite. It, that's the only thing that makes sense it does. to me. Yeah, it, and me when I figured this out. And this all started way back, probably 20 years ago. I was at a Breen Bible um, Fellowship Conference, and Ricky Kurth, nice guy, Pastor Kurth, yes. made a comment. He goes, we were going through 1 Corinthians. He said, unless you understand that there's a kingdom perspective in Corinthians, that Paul's there talking is. to kingdom saints and great saints, the book of 1 Corinthians will never make any sense. And I, I sat back there in the audience, and I'm going, what are you talking about? And now, you know, 20 years later, it finally all gelled, and I put it together, and I, I got it talk to him about that again it makes ever. perfect sense yeah. totally sense um as far as that goes oh we actually got through them all we did um, all 37 again what we're gonna see is um um a little problem ananias and sapphira um got a little bit greedy and they only gave part of the money which sounds like things that would probably happen here in america if we Pro- decide probably there, so in, in you know you're churches. gonna have one or yeah. two cases of people of people doing things and like and that. the issue Being was selfish. and the issue was that people were not they weren't made to do this, okay? Yeah, they wanted right. to do this. Yes. And what it means is Ananias and Sapphira probably weren't saved, but they probably. were like, just like, oh, maybe this makes sense. We'll You're try being it out. filled with the Holy yeah. Spirit. I don't and think and we're going to see it. They, like it's that. not that they didn't give any money. They said, hey, we sold our house for uh, 100000 Let's just celebrate we sold it for fifty, and we'll mm-hmm. keep the other fifty mm-hmm. as a nest egg. Mm-hmm. And remember what happened to them? God killed them. And the reason God killed them was to be an example for everybody else, and it definitely shaped everyone up. And, okay, don't do that. You know, you mess with God, you uh, you get in trouble under the law. There's consequences. So, so anyways, how, how does this apply to us today? Well, if you're going to start the church, the body of Christ, in Acts chapter 2, which a lot of grace people want to do, this stuff applies to you. It does. Um, but yet most people go, no, that doesn't apply to me. Well, so now they get to pick and choose what they want to apply. That's not how that works. <laughs> okay. Like, well, no, no, the, the, the tribulation's not coming. Well, it's still coming yet, but... <laughs> they have to come to the, to the full knowledge of the truth. So they pick and choose, and, you, and basically, yeah, okay, fine, pick and choose. Why don't you just say, hey, none of this applies to us. 
and let's look and see where grace started. And grace started with the Apostle Paul. And uh, and you're not going to find it in the book of Acts. No, You've got to start with no. the book of Romans. If, if you get if your... Not, then yeah, I can yeah. understand how you could even attempt to start the, the And that's why they say two. that we speak in tongues and that with the fact that we, you know, we have the gift of knowledge. Yeah, those and, sign gifts were done away with when the dispensation of grace yeah. started. And, really, yeah. and that, of, of course, that was at the end of Acts 28 when Israel was totally set aside at that point. And what was left was faith, hope, and love. And that's what, what, what Paul... You just... People need to keep going and they've got to be able to understand to put in perspective Paul's epistles, what he taught, what he preached, and the message that's contained therein. If you don't, then of course all, all that's going to be produced from, from that is confusion. It's like not seeing the yellow part on the, the, gray, the, the right division chart. The tribulations should have started. Yeah, and, but, but it didn't. And, and so we, you have to ask yourself the question, well, it didn't start. What happened? You know, and, and the answer is for most people is, well, we have replaced Israel. God's now working with us rather than Israel. And all those promises that God gave Israel and, you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and even the Old Testament and, and, in, and, in, and even in Acts, So my, que my question to that is, how is it that God is going to be able to restore his authority in the heavenlies and on earth? Well, most people don't even understand the heavenly aspect of it because, you know, most funerals I go to, they go, well, even Christ said, I go to prepare a place for you. Because <laughs> these kingdom saints, <laughs> yeah. these kingdom saints in yeah. Acts chapter 4, they have an earthly calling and an earthly hope. That's what this kingdom is all about. And by the time grace starts and what God revealed to and through the Apostle Paul is, is a heavenly hope. This is that new body, the church, the body of Christ, a body of believers that's going to be able to replace the rebellion rebellious and fallen angels that sided with Satan when he fell way back when. Remember, folks, God has to restore his authority in the heavenlies and on earth. He has to deal with the fallen angels, sin in the universe or in the heavenlies, and he's got to do the exact same thing on the earth. Well, so-called Lord's Prayer, you know, our Father art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then what's the next part? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so it's the you know heavenly program coming to earth that That's is not right. our prayer i don't pray no, that prayer i don't either ever. um yet you know how many people you go to oh, a funeral you goodness. go to a wedding and they say that they do and it's like so you're praying for and that part of it isn't so bad praying like it's the a heathen, part about the repet forgive the, yeah for rep repetition being and, and yeah. they're much saying yeah and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us that's basically telling god that's, that's forgive me like i forgive others well most of us have a little bit of you know leftover anger in us and we don't forgive we do. everyone we do <laughs> and so you don't want to paul says we should forgive others like christ has forgiven us well that's how right. did christ forgive us totally that's a little different than the lord's prayer well which one's right one's a kingdom perspective one is a grace perspective and so uh, when christ died on the cross he died for all of our sins past present and future and at that time they were all future and all that's you have right. to do is believe that's it that's it you don't have to simplifies everything you, you know you're spiritually baptized you're spiritually circumcised you're basically set the apart you make a decision in heaven and decide to believe that christ died on the cross for your sins personally that he was buried and three days later he resurrected from the dead the holy spirit places you into the church the body of christ and he himself seals that transaction with himself when he indwells you at that moment all the things that you're giving up for and of course we also talk about a lot of this on a week-to-week -week basis as well because one of the aspects of this Christian life, you talking about living the grace life, is understanding who you are in Christ. And once you realize that, how God sees you, basically you've been raised up to the same level as Jesus Christ himself. And once you realize that, you have confidence, you, you have the ability to talk to people because of you see who you are. And this is where and a change and a growth is going to yeah. be able to take place. Yeah. Because we're all trying to reach a mature state of being when it comes to being spiritual. Yeah. It doesn't get any easier than that. God did all the work through Christ, and we get we all get the all benefits, benefits if we believe and get over ourselves. That's it. And remember, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It is impossible to please God without faith. Amen. Faith plus nothing. Amen. Close us in prayer, Nick. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come together uh, tonight and thank you. <laughs> And give you praise and honor and glory for everything that we have in Christ. We uh, give you thanks for what you accomplished for us on that cross. We thank you for the word of God, the confidence that we can have to place our, our, our final authority in all matters concerning faith in your word. We hope that we can be used as ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ to be able to teach and preach the word rightly divided, to be in season and out of season, to remind people exactly who they are in Christ. And of course, uh, all praise, honor, and glory goes back to you. And it's in your son's precious name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, folks. Have a good evening.